Hi, pre-K kids. Remember the orca whale? We compared and contrasted the orca whale to sharks. Let's refresh our memories a little bit. Remember, whales have a breathing hole on the top. So they have to surface and come out of the water and able to take a breath. Unlike sharks who breathe through gills and they can stand in water as long as they want. Remember, the sharks have the one big dorsal fin that they use and their tail looks like kind of like a mustache. And then they have two flippers down here for, there's two flippers down here for swimming. There's two types of whales. Orca whales have lots of teeth in them, lots and lots of teeth. So they're meat eaters. And we also have different kinds of whales that have something called baleen for teeth and it looks like a broom. They don't eat meat because they don't have teeth and they can't chew. And I'll show you in a little bit what they do like to eat. But first, we're gonna study about salmon and the salmon life cycle because that's the prey that keeps the orca whales alive. So we're gonna study the salmon life cycle now. So here's a big picture of the salmon life cycle, but we're gonna focus in on the two different parts of the salmon life cycle. <clears throat> this picture is kind of hard to read, but it's the best I've got. So we started out in little streams up in the mountains. That's where salmon lay their eggs. The old fish from the ocean come back and lay their eggs in the little pebbles up in the mountain streams. After a few weeks, the eggs turn into little fish called fry. They're really tiny. They're only about this long. And then they get bigger. They stay up in the rivers and creeks and start working their way down to the ocean and they start to get a little bigger and in this picture these guys are about this big the juvenile fish and when they get big enough they make their way to the estuary and they like to hang out there at the eelgrass remember we studied the eelgrass and the estuary they hang out there because there's lots of food that can make them grow big and when they get big enough, they venture out and start to migrate to areas in the ocean where they know that there's a lot of food and they can just eat and eat and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally, they grow into, these are like teenager kind of kids. And these then grow into mature adults. And big adult salmon, they try to sneak away from those orcas so they don't get eaten up and they also try not to get caught into fishermen's nets. And they just have fun swimming in the ocean and eating and exploring new things under the sea. Then they turn into grandpas and grandmas. And when they're old and they're getting close to being ready to die, they come back out of the ocean, spend a little time in the estuary again, and they actually, they're smart enough to find their way back to the river or stream where they came from. So once they swim around and they find the exact river or stream, they start to swim upstream, 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 upstream. And hopefully there's no dams in the way to keep them from not being able to get back to their original home. And then when they start to spawn, they turn colors and they grow a big hump on their back and they don't look very good. They look like they're starting to get sick. And they go clear up into the mountains, into the little streams, until they find a quiet place in a stream where there's lots of pebbles on the bottom of the river or the stream, and they lay their eggs. The mama fish lays the eggs, and the daddy fish fertilizes those eggs, and the eggs stay hidden in the rocks so other creatures can't eat the eggs, and then they start the life cycle all over again. That's why we studied the estuary and the ocean, so you could see how the salmon fit into the different habitats. They live in the mountains, they live in the estuary, and then they go out into the deep ocean. But because it's a life cycle, they make the full circle and always come back to where they were born.